scraping Google Maps for keywords and then a location and getting the stars, the review count, the name, the address, the website, everything that you see in Google Maps, scraping that using Scrapebox. That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. Of course, it's a premium plugin, the new one, it is the Google Maps Scraper plugin. So of course this is Scrapebox, like I said. So if you don't have Scrapebox, you wanna jump over to scrapebox.com roll down to the bottom and grab the deal before it ends. And then you wanna head over to scrapeboxtips.com so I can give you free tutorials and guides and teach you all about Scrapebox, all of it's for free. So my name is Ryan Borden. In this video, we're gonna cover the Google Maps Scraper plugin. It is a premium plugin. So you're gonna to go to the premium plugins menu, go to show available plugins, and then you're going to find the Google Maps Scraper plugin. If you have not already purchased it, you can purchase it. Once you purchase it, you go here and you install it, or if it's, you need to update it, so on and so forth. Once that's done, you go to premium plugins and you go to the Google Maps Scraper plugin and you're gonna launch it. It looks like this, and we can see across the top as we just kind of work through this, and then we're gonna run it. We can see that it gets the business name, the address, the phone number, the website stars, the review count, and the business hours. Let me make this a little bigger. And the business hours itself, right? So it gets all of this data, assuming that said data is available. Obviously, for example, if a business has no reviews, then it can't tell you it's gonna is gonna show zero here because there's no reviews, right? So, or if they don't have a website because some businesses don't or don't have a phone number, right? Whatever, it's gonna get what's available. So it does support proxies, which is gonna be very useful when it comes to Google. Pretty basic, you can load them in, you can clear them and you can turn them on and off. For the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna turn them off. It is the same proxy format that you use in Scrapebox, same proxies, private proxies, that sort of thing. For the business type, this is type of business. So I can say car dealership, right? Or I can say pizza restaurant, right? Whatever, whatever it is that you want. The business location, let's say Detroit, Michigan, because I'm up here in Detroit. This could be, you know, anything that you want, obviously location wise. I think you can even put a zip code. So let's put like, um, 48900, I don't even know if that's an actual zip code, but we're gonna try it, right? Uh, you can load these locations and load these business types, of course, and clear them out. The number of results per keyword. I'm not 100% certain what Google Maps gives is the max results, probably 200 or less, because Google search engine is also 200 or less. I'm gonna put it at 1,000 and just see what happens. And we won't get 1,000 because Google will cut us off, but I'm just gonna punch it in so we can get as many results as possible, right? Under more settings, we have some nice stuff. We have a delay in seconds after each keyword. So the delay between, we're gonna to try to find all of the car dealership um, results, and then we're gonna delay for this many seconds. Delay in seconds after loading maps. So this is like Google Maps gets loaded, and then we're just gonna wait before we start. The point here is to look like a human. Google Maps is going to block you just like Google if they think that you're using something to scrape them. So we need to look like a human and we do that by not going faster than a human could go because the program can go faster than a human but we don't wanna do that. So a little delay makes things nice. Delay in seconds after searching. So that is after we hit search because for example, there might be multiple pages. Let's see, let's have a look here. So if we go here to Google Maps and we roll down, as we roll down, we can see that more, what, look for the little arrow down here, what kind of loads, if I can go fast enough. See, it's loading there. Those, that's like kind of like the next page, if you will. It's, it's a JavaScript based loader, but um, you don't want to have Scrapebox just like hammering away here and then pulling all of this data. Again, we're trying to look like a human, right? So. Um, that is delay in seconds after searching. And then we have the page load timeout. That is how long we wait before we skip uh, a keyword or skip that loading, right? So um, that's set to 30, that's a pretty accurate. Obviously, if I were to go here and type in pizza and it took more than 30 seconds for something to come up, then we would assume that it failed and we need to retry or do something else, right? And so that is the more settings, we can close that. Now, those are very important if you keep getting things blocked, you know, to try to increase your delays. The fewer proxies you're using, um, you wanna go higher on delays. And that's directly related to the number of businesses and locations you're using because like this would be car dealership times, 
Detroit, Michigan, and this zip code plus pizza restaurant times these things. So this would be four separate queries. If I put 100 in here and 100 in here, that's 100 times 100, which is um, 10,000, right? Yeah. And so if I put 1,000 in here and 1,000 in here, that's 1,000 times 1,000, which is a million queries. So if you have a going to try to do a million queries, that's going to take a minute. You're going to need a lot of proxies. You're going to need to slow it down because the way you get your proxies blocked is by going too fast. We don't want to look like a robot. We want to look like a human being. And so that's the delay. Enough about that. Now, here, obviously, start and stop, pretty basic. The snapshot, we can save a snapshot. This is kind of like save all of our progress where we're at. So it saves our keywords, the location. If I put a thousand in here and a thousand in here, it's a million results. I might not get that done all at once. And let's say my proxies get blocked, or let's say I let that run for three days. I'm just making up numbers. I don't know how long it'll take to run, but let's say I let it run for X time period and I need to stop it because I need to turn off my computer or I have a laptop and I need to take it somewhere. I don't know, whatever. Um, I can then just stop and save the snapshot. So it kind of like saves the progress of where we're at. And then I can come back later and load that snapshot and pick up kind of where we left off. And so when we're done, we can export these records as text or we can export them as a nice Excel spreadsheet, right? Because it makes sense to have these as Excel. So let's just run it. As it run it, we'll see some stuff down here. You're gonna see that Python is installed. It does utilize Python. It, it, Scrapebox installs all that automatically when you install it, but people ask about that. And then the show browser for debug purposes, um, it even makes the note, do not interact with the browser. You don't wanna do this unless you're trying to solve a problem. If something's not working and you're trying to solve a problem, you wanna tick that box or if support tells you to, right? You're not trying to interact with the browser. You're just trying to see, hey, what's going on? Because it lets you see what's happening in the background. And then you can see, oh, it says it's blocked. Well, then you know the proxies are blocked or there's some sort of error, whatever, right? Pretty basic. There's also a really great log. We can see some results coming in. We'll talk about that in a second. The status over here, it tells us, one of four, and it says keywords one of four, because remember it's this times this. So there's actually two types and two locations. So there's gonna be four, and we can see it initializes delays, searches, delay, etc. If you have any errors down here at the bottom, at some point this log is gonna roll up, and it would say this and this and this error. Now it's kind of hard to read in this box, but you can do like a uh, control A and control C, or select all and then copy this. And this is useful to send to support if there's a problem, also useful to put in like notepad or something so you can read it and just say, oh, hey, it says the IPs were blocked. Well, the proxies are blocked, whatever, right? So great troubleshooting down here along with information of what's happening so you can understand, you know, what's going on, right? So let's look at the, let's look at the results. So we got um, different names. We can see here the address. These all have phones and websites, that sort of stuff. Uh, 4.8 stars, 1,149 res reviews. This is the business hours on Thursday. They're open on Friday, Saturday, whatever. It's showing Thursday first because today so happens to be Thursday when I'm recording this video. So um, Google is displaying today's hours first and so on and so forth. And so this is just gonna keep going. I'm gonna stop it because we don't care. Like I don't need these results. So now that it's stopped, we can go ahead and export these as a spreadsheet and let's just go here, make a new folder and do Excel. And then we're gonna export them as text so we can see that as well. You see the cursor, I don't know if you can tell when the cursor goes over this, oh, it took a second there. The cursor was, you can see it out here and it froze here. I'm gonna tell you right now, if you have a lot of results, when you export to Excel, Excel is a great uh, program but their formatting is not exactly what I would call the most optimal. So it's gonna take a minute to write all this data into a format that Excel can read. And it's, you, it might appear like it's locking up for a moment. Just be patient and wait. If you have a million lines in here, it's gonna take several minutes. It might take 20, 30 minutes. Be patient, let it go. Export as text. And then I get to choose you know, what I wanna export. I'm just gonna take everything and I'm gonna go text. And then we're gonna go over here and we're going to look at these actual results here in my folder that we just made. And so here is the text, let's look at that. And each section is in quotes, so the name is in quotes, for example, the address is inside of quotes, so you can see. And the reason for that is because it's a comma separated thing, so we're comma separating, but if there's commas in the address, 
then we don't want that to uh, be an issue, right? So you can save this as a CSV or do whatever you're gonna do with it, right? But let's look at Excel because obviously that's gonna be better for human readability, right? And, and usability and you could upload this to Google uh, Sheets and all that jazz. So got the column headers across the top, pretty straightforward. Here's all of our data that we can see everything right across the top. And then I could highlight these and copy out if I wanted to do something with the websites or whatever you're doing, right? It doesn't matter, right? So that is the Google Maps scraper. It basically pulls in all of the data based on keywords and then locations. I wasn't curious if it did. I, I've done the locations. I didn't actually try the zip codes. We should just try the zip code and see if it actually works and pulls addresses from the actual zip code itself. Presumptively, it probably will because if we type in um, pizza for eight one nine hundred oh that's too many I don't know that's a different one but uh, it does bring that up I guess that's way down here the four eight one nine zero I don't know um, I typed in something here it is searching I, my bet guess would be that this zip code does not exist let us try what did I type here four eight nine hundred that may not be a real zip code. I'm still bringing up the 481901. So that's probably not a real address. Oh, it's bringing up something. Um, so it's 4819, 48900 is bringing up 4197. I, I'm guessing that Google is just uh, guessing and throwing something relatively close to whatever this is. So basically, obviously, if we put in a real zip code, then it works just fine. So that is the Google Maps Scraper plugin. Thanks for watching this Scrapebox video. For more Scrapebox videos, click the subscribe button down below and then click the bell. And then check out these other great Scrapebox videos.